Welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio here. Thank you. Steven and Yoshiki from We Are X documentary playing uh, Sundance Film Festival. Uh, just to get the most basic question out of the way first, how did this come together? Uh, Steven, were you already a fan of X Japan or? I had never heard of X Japan until my producer, John Basak, called me up and uh, told me that this project had come his way. Uh, so I did a lot of research really quickly. Um, and when I discovered that the slogan of the band in the early days was psychedelic violence crime of visual shock, I knew I needed to do a film about this. Whatever that was, I knew I needed to do it. And uh, I'm really glad I did. And Yoshiki, um, how did that work for you Like when you were talking with him and kind of deciding? Because obviously, a band that's been around for 30 years and as massive as X Japan is, you, you obviously have to be really careful about who you let tell your story. So what was kind of the vetting process for Steven? Well, so I met John Batsex, you know, the producer, <coughs> through my agent, uh, WME, William Moss Endeavor. Then, yeah, he introduced me to Steve. Steve then, I was like, instantly, I think, so he's the one to, you know, do this film. <laughs> and just, uh, you know, the vibe. Yeah. It was a vibe thing. <laughs> there was a vibe. I do a lot of music films. John usually will kind of bring some of these ideas to me first. Uh, we did a film about the Stones together, you know, uh, and I've done a number since then. So, yeah, it was a really good fit. And I, I like the fact that I didn't really know the band because then I could discover it in my audience. There's a fan base, but then you also want the uninitiated to discover it with you. So they kind of ride along with my perspective of figuring out what this whole X thing is about, you know, so... And as a veteran of music documentaries, mm -hmm. what was it like? Because again, band been around for thirty years, yeah, and a massive amount of archival material. <clears throat> was that a blessing or a curse when you got started? It actually was a blessing. I love archive. The, what what always inhibits me is when people don't document things, or you just can't find things. Um, I was joking yesterday. It's like they're actually making the sequel now. There's cameras beyond here. They're <laughs> always following him. He's very well documented. I think Yoshiki was very smart uh, early on in making sure that everything was filmed. And there's just stacks and stacks of tapes uh, from interviews to just him relaxing in his dressing room, 30 camera shoots of every single concert. It was overwhelming, but in a great way. Because we could just dig and dig and dig and find all these little gems to kind of uh, sprinkle in the film. I mean, it really builds the world of extra pain in a way that I don't think you otherwise could have done if they didn't have that material. You found a David Lynch? We found David Lynch, yeah, because the log is very well organized, except for some things. And there were just all these tapes that just said, Yoshiki, you know, I don't know, what is it? So I pop it in, and it's like 20 tapes of you being directed by David Lynch in the 90s. You know what I mean? It's just, Yoshiki's in a desert, there's fire, lightning going off, naked. and David, yeah, naked on a beach, and David Lynch directing him. So like these kind of discoveries just blew my mind. It was, yeah. it, it was really cool. But at one point, Stan Lee, Stan Lee, they did a comic book together. We had to sneak that in there. We are still doing comic books. Still yeah. doing yeah, comic book together. It's present tense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a comic called uh, Blood Red Dragon in yeah. which Stan Lee turns Yoshiki here into a uh, superhero. Superhero. <laughs> which I think is uh, very apropos. Yeah. Because as uh, you see in the film, it's, and the theme is kind of overarching throughout, is I think there's a real sense of vulnerability, <clears throat> but also strength. Mm -hmm. And for, as a filmmaker, how much of that balance was something that you kind of went into, or was it just when you're looking at the footage and you're doing the interviews, you're like, this is what's coming out, or were you trying to craft that balance? Well, it's interesting. We had almost no pre-production. We really jumped into this, and there was a treatment. There was like a, the basic biographies available to you, but you discover a film like this in the making of it, and it continued to inform me that even, you know, as I would dive into the archive and find things, it was a constant evolution. But yeah, the balance was really important because that's kind of what their music is. They balance really heavy and really beautiful. It's, you know, there's always those dichotomies within not only your life story, but just the, and it's embodied in the music itself. So then that has to also be expressed in the film in the way we balance the narrative and the visuals and the music and all that, so. And Shiki, how did, how did you find the balance now that you've seen the film and, and also just having all these cameras on you and having cameras on you for as long as you have, like, how much of it, when you're looking at this and you're seeing how you're being presented in the film, like what's what's the feelings that are going through you as you're watching this? Well, we had a uh, premiere yesterday that I cried 10 times during 90 minutes. 
was very painful. But at the same time, it's like, um, yeah, I told Stephen, like, you know, because we had dark, sad stories, uh, memories as well. But we wanted to make, make this film at, towards the end, a positive vibe. So I think then Stephen did the amazing job. So, yeah, it's even though you know, our past was really dark, but this film is going to try to uh, give us a bright future. Because that's what you see with the fans. They kind of take, like, it's, it's like they're almost like, um, there's a healing power to the music. It sounds cheesy, but it's really true. When you interview the fans over and over and over again, people that have had their own tragedies relate to it. And the music has helped them through. It's over and over again. I've never seen anything like it, where they're not just fans. It's almost like they're disciples, and they've somehow been cleansed or, or saved uh, by the music. So uh, that is something we wanted to express uh, mm -hmm. as well. Because music saved you. You yes. had a childhood racked with tragedy, and you've lost your father, and all that stuff goes into the music. And mm -hmm. it just, I think, uh, really communicates to the fans. So we really wanted to get that across, too. And Obviously, in, in a lot of ways, this is kind of the statement to the, the U.S. This is kind of the crossover, you know, this is the history that a lot of U.S. audiences are going to see about X Japan and hopefully go back and dis discover the albums. Um, I, I went that way out. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and uh, what I heard uh, in the albums I listened to, I think it was Blue Blood and Jealousy, mm -hmm. um, was so much other music. And so it's... Have you ever had conversations with some of these big U.S. bands? I mean, besides the ones, you know, like Gene Simmons speaking in the film, and, and they've expressed that they were influenced in any way. Because when I'm listening to the music, I'm hearing so many different bands, like, you know, like Dream Theater's there. But the, I also hear a, a little bit some, some balladry, but then you got, I'm pretty sure that was Metallica. I mean, yeah. things are blowing up in Madison Square Garden. You know, like it's hard to not draw parallels. And again, I think you said at the premiere, uh, David Bowie, Spirit Animal for the film. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how much when you look at kind of U.S. bands, Shishiki, are you, are you like, oh, we did that. You know, we're first. <laughs> or have they come up to you and said, like, you're a big influence on us? Well, I mean, you know, I started being a classical p p pianist. I mean, I started learning classical first. Then, you know, I found out Kiss. Then eventually, I played Zeppelin, David Bowie and Sex Pistols. So because I didn't know the rule, you know, genre needs to be like hard rock or new wave or whatever. So we just combined everything. So yeah, I love you know, listening to David Boy and listening to Iron Maiden, Metallica at the same time. But Metallica and uh, uh, Expansion Japan are kind of the you know, same age. So I mean, mm -hmm. I love Metallica, so too. It's like, uh, you know, just comb mixed up everything. So. But it would have been the bands that were really listening to music coming out of Japan because, like a lot of bands, uh, they, they had a hard time breaking in the States. Mm -hmm. So it would probably have been like touring musicians coming through from the West, maybe discovering you guys in Japan. I mean, we actually didn't really get into a lot of this in the film, but like, what were some of those Western bands that came over that you might have met in Japan when they were touring that like, look up to you now? Do you, I mean... I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're some, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, like first time, like 20 years ago, so the first time we came here, mm -hmm. the, the US, you know, Andara people, I mean, told me, you gotta decide the genre, either you go hard or soft. <laughs> you can't mix that. Can't be both. That, yeah. that, that doesn't work in, in, in this, you know, United States. Like, really? Mm -hmm. But we didn't listen to that. <laughs> well, good, because I mean, it's, that, that's a very frustrating thing to hear because, <laughs> because one of the beautiful things about exploring and discovering these albums was, was having that journey. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, and kind of stopping and going, wait, am I on the same album? <laughs> like, it, it, but it's, it's a great feeling to have. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I'm, I'm glad that, that this film exists. In the film, like you said, there's certain things you didn't touch on. Um, there was obviously exchange about Taiji mm -hmm. that was not going to go any further. What was it like um, trying revisiting a lot of these things and trying to get some of these stories um, out of the, the band members? Well, I mean, Yoshiki and I, we, we conducted three, four, maybe five interviews. I mean, as time progressed, we got to know each other more and more. And uh, he's a great interview subject. I mean, I think the Taiji secret's the biggest one we couldn't crack, but that's fine. You know, we don't have to expose everything all the time. There can be ambiguity and mystery. Um, Toshi was surprisingly uh, very frank and honest about his troubled years having been brainwashed and, and abused by a, a cult. I mean, this is not an easy thing to talk about. Um, 
So there was a lot of trust uh, between us. I would just say the other members are just very quiet. I mean, Sugizo, who is the new guitar player, is a very poetic, eloquent man. Uh, and you go then to Pata and Heath, the bass player, another guitar player, and they're just very quiet, shy. And then the language barrier sometimes can be a problem, uh, even with an interpreter. So, you know, so their stories may be a little more minor, but they're, they're part of the ensemble, you know? Everything was very organic. Mm. We didn't really plan something. Just, yeah. yeah, happened everything organic. And it's, uh, it's obviously it's something to appreciate because there's a lot of documentaries that, that hold your hand through the entire process. Mm. And I felt like there's an awful lot of context that exists that maybe wasn't necessarily explicitly stated, mm -hmm. but it was nice to kind of experience it as it went. Um, final kind of question statement here. I, I want to make sure that on the record that the appreciation for the cinematography is out there because um, particularly the Madison Square Garden footage mm -hmm. is absolutely incredible and considering there was so much arch archival stuff, how much was fresh uh, or, uh, footage shot? I actually couldn't tell. I mean you could probably go through and count the minutes or something, but I mean, it could be half and half. Yeah. I mean I had two uh, brilliant uh, cinematographers, Sean Kirby uh, is a really master photographer um, and he shot all this beautiful slow motion stuff. He was with us in Japan, did most of the interviews. Uh, John Marangorn, who's more of a filmmaker in his own right, was a little bit more of the run and gun, kind of aggressive. While we'd be spending time with Yoshiki, I'd make him go bother all the different members and break into their dressing rooms and ask them funny questions and he has no boundaries. So between like that kind of style and more of the lyrical, uh, you know, cinematic style of Kirby, well, again, nice balance, which again is part of kind of thematic too. You know, you have hard, you have soft, you have these two different sides, and I think they they wove together really nicely and get uh, have a good tension, uh, cinema cinematographically. Oh, sorry, in the film. <laughs> All right, so I lied. That wasn't the last question because I'm going to give one for two uh, Yoshiki here. If X Japan's impact is never huge in the U.S., I mean, what is, does that really matter? At this point, I mean, 30 years, huge arenas, it's just, the band, the music is incredible. Does it really matter if the crossover finally happens? Good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's like, a, why am I doing the music? It's like, a, what's the reason? I think, very, I may have to say it's a very selfish way for me to survive. That's the main re reason. Maybe secondary, or might as well, bring it, bring it to the other, you know, the market over, you know, overseas. So, number one, doing music for me, you know, for me to be, keep living, um, physically, mentally. Um, also, I want to give back to my fans. But they are the reason we are still here. So, yeah. Then, to answer your question, might as well, well just make it big. <laughs> Spread this love to the world. Well, excellent. Thank you guys very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.